Hello everyone and uh, good afternoon. Welcome you all to the session. I hope I'm properly audible to all of you. Uh, so uh, we're good afternoon for the uh, uh, workshop today. So uh, the topic is robotics process automation. So we're going to be looking at the idea of RPA, what exactly RPA is about. And uh, uh, so in this two day workshop, you're going to be understanding and learning about the idea of RPA, what RPA is all about and uh, you know how do we talk about when we say uh, robotics process automation, what do you exactly mean? And uh, uh, the exact process suitable for RPA, the benefits of RPA, what are the myths that people think that RPA is, and uh, the products of RPA, the project life cycle, how do we go about the project building of RPA. Uh, before we begin with that, I would request you to drop a short introduction of yourself, uh, uh, including you know what industry you work for, or maybe if you're into college, or uh, if you're in uh, you know any particular uh, firm or industry, or if you're an entrepreneur, what do you exactly do and uh, uh, you know a little bit of profile of yours would help me out to uh, bring out better examples on RPA according to your context Context so if you can help me out with that way. Yeah, you know uh, Please drop in the question box or maybe you can use the chat box and drop a short introduction of yourself Okay, so meanwhile, we'll start with it so we're gonna be understanding the idea of robotics process automation. Well, so this word robotics process automation has a couple of words, uh, you know, this this particular phrase has uh, three words combined with it so uh, you know first thing is robotics and uh, then process and automation so the idea of uh, automation is more about uh, automation is more about uh, removing uh, or reducing human involvement into a specific uh, job we can call it as more of automation for example let's say you know if there's a human efforts put in opening a tap and if I can make that tap automated, the moment I put my hand under the tap, the water should come automatically. That's automation. Or let's say if there is a factory in which uh, uh, bottles are being manufactured, and then bottles should be taken for packing or filling. So if there's a human who is picking those bottles in a in a in a box and then going to the filling machine and putting those bottles on a filling machine, so that's an involvement of a human. So there's a bottle manufacturing machine which is manufacturing bottles, and there's a human labor who is you know taking picking those bottles and going to another machine for filling those bottles with uh, the coca-cola or any medicine right so there's a human involvement in between the two process if i can reduce that human involvement by automating the two tasks i can call it automation so automation is about uh, merging two processes merging two steps and uh, uh, that could be used in a variety of situation automatic automation is widely used in the manufacturing industry so automation for automating the manufacturing process, automation for bottling plant, automation for manufacturing of medicines, where you can see that medicines are manufactured, then they are spread over conveyor belt, and then uh, that conveyor belt could be used for further processing. Automation for uh, manufacturing, right? Automobile sector. So automation is widely used in these sectors, right? But we are not going to talk about these things, right? We are just getting the contextual understanding of it. Okay. So well, that's about more of automation. And uh, then we can think about automation in business process, right? So that could be what? So one of the way it could be, you can say in business process automation could be used. It, it could be example, let's say I book a train ticket and uh, uh, you know, I want usually what happens if my ticket isn't waiting, I go to website and put my PNR and get the update that uh, well, whether my ticket is confirmed or not. So instead of that, uh, you know, what people of IRCTC can do is, or they have already done that is, the moment my ticket is getting confirmed, they'll drop an automated email or SMS to me so that I can always get, uh, you know, uh, updated whether my ticket is confirmed or not. So that's automation. Removing human efforts in, in process of executing a particular task is automation. All right, well, that's more about automation. When you talk about, uh, you know, uh, business, so we use a lot of stuff in manual stuff or manual, you can say operations in business. For example, we might, uh, you know, uh, kind of do, uh, we have clerks in bank, right? So when you go to bank and you want to uh, submit some money, so there are clerks in the bank who take your money, fill that, you know, count it out and fill that amount in the bank account. There are clerks who are everyday process checks. There are clerks who manage accounts and do a lot of other documentation stuff. Their job is repetitive. Their job is uh, always, uh, uh, you know, repetitive and mundane job. There's no much of human uh, skills needed in that. Maybe let's say that there's no much of creativity, thinking, innovation needed in the bank job. 
right so that those kind of jobs can be automated as well and when we say robotics process automation or rpa here we talk about creating software robots which could be used to automate such jobs we have already understood the idea of automation now let's understand the idea of robot what exactly could be a robot so in the manufacturing plant or where a bottle is being manufactured or a car being is being manufactured so there is a human who will do welding of car there is another human who will do painting of car if i can create a machine who can do the job of that human welding or painting or maybe assembling of car parts spare parts i can call that as a robot a robot might a hardware robot might look like this multiple robots might be used to do different different task so you can say a robot which is doing a job of human which involved involves a specific process that can be called as robots right so when a robot replaces or when a machine replaces a human where the human is doing a specific task that task could be uh, painting the car uh, chassis or maybe welding it or maybe drilling it things like that i can call that robotics or robots maybe uh, the way i have a human who is uh, you know uh, working in a restaurant and uh, uh, you know uh, the human brings up some food uh, to the consumers if i can have a machine doing that i can call that as a robot a robot is bringing food and uh, so yeah please uh, have patience about programming language and technology we're going to sing up that okay and uh, similarly if there is a human who is kind of uh, you know doing up uh, the idea of let's say maybe uh, capping the bottles in a bottling plant i can make a machine do that that could be think of uh, you know thought of as a as a uh, robot so robotics is more about replacing human which who is doing a specific process automation is about uh, yeah this se session is mainly for computer science so we're going to coming to the context uh, please have some patience uh, you know and before we reach out to the topic okay so yeah that's about robotics and uh, the automation is about more of switching between the switching between the uh, multiple process right so that's we have seen the idea of robotics and automation now when we say rpa rpa is about creating software robots the way we had similar hardware robots robotics process automation is more about creating software robot so if we talk about the industry software industry right what they actually do so multiple uh, known iit industry have some specific business process right for example if you talk about uh, known iit industry so they have specific business process okay so you can say that uh, uh, you know uh, there could be a lot of com organizations like banks and uh, the healthcare and the education organization indian railway government organization in units a lot of it companies provide services to them so if you ask me a question what tcs wipro infosys hcl cognizant essential do so they will they provide services to uh, non it business non it companies right now at the time in these all non it companies they use a lot of software they use a lot of erp solutions and crm portals for execution of business process what could be an example of business process let's say if you talk about a bank the example of business process could be opening a bank account or clearing checks or maybe uh, validating a particular transaction as it is a suspicious transaction or not or maybe if you talk about a, a healthcare organization a business process could be validating a patient identifying the patient identity processing patient report right if you talk about a supply chain industry a business process could be uh, you know uh, maybe uh, tracking a particular product where it has reached updating to the customer these all it companies infosys accenture uh, ibm capgemini all of them they provide such software develop such software for these companies right and they provide software solution now at this point of time multiple of these companies have and organizations banks supply chain management organization finance organization healthcare education companies government has collected a number of such software and they're using a lot of such software for their business process and that has involved a lot of human efforts into that if you look at bank a sample bank and the number of humans working into that are enormous are huge and what they're doing is many of those are not doing any creative job they are more of doing 9 to 5 jobs where you know their jobs and their work is repetitive every day done so the idea of rpa or robotics process automation is to reduce such jobs or make robots do such jobs so creating software robots which can do such jobs all right let's say i look at a erp solution collect some data fill in excel sheet upload it to email 
my boss is asking me to generate a report i can create a robot develop that report so idea of rpa is about creating such robots which can do software tasks okay if you talk more about example about it right so let's say that uh, you know uh, let me first give an example you know how can i use maybe an rpa solution so i'm gonna open a portal called uipath studio which is a software to do that don't ask me about the software we're going to discuss this a lot in detail how does it works out what the software name is and all this is just to give you a demo about what rpa is about and how does it works out so when we're saying software robots what do we mean by that all right and when you say uh, you know a particular uh, stuff you know maybe software robot anything else like that what do i mean by that we're going to be looking at that uh, logic here so maybe let me let me try out opening a particular tool here that could be okay so let's say that uh, you know uh, here we're gonna be kind of uh, i'm gonna open a bot and let's see what this bot can do for us or maybe we can create a bot immediately which can do a specific stuff for us all right so uh, this bot is uh, still a very simple one and let me try out checking if i can get any other bot uh, you know which could help you out understanding more of contextual idea of what robotics process automation is process automation is about Okay, so just a moment. Okay, so let's see this bot. What what this bot is gonna do? Okay, and uh, so I'm gonna help you out understanding what this bot is capable of doing, and you know what is that we're gonna be asking it to do. All right, so just a moment. And I'll take all your questions once I explain the boat and the configuration of it. Okay, and I think it's uh, should be variables are defined here emails and uh, Just a moment Okay, so just a moment hold on for a minute and I'm gonna show you an example of how the execution of both works out or maybe you know when I say software robot what I'm exactly talking about it. Okay. Okay, so well uh, here we go So let's say that here we have a boat here and what this boat is gonna do is you know uh, The moment I drop uh, an email to this boat, right? It's gonna go to Flipkart. Let's say if I drop an email. So what I do is you know uh, uh, I go to my mailbox I compose an email and I uh, will send an email to myself. Let's say and uh, I write subject as let's say iPhone so when I write iPhone in a subject matter, what this bot will do is it will read my email, go to the subject, check the subject name is iPhone. It will search iPhone on Flipkart, collect the prices of all iPhones, generate a CSV file and drop an email to me back. So it's a bot which will do a specific task. Let me show you demo. So I have sent an email and you can see that there is an unread email from me and the subject of email is iPhone. Okay, so let me minimize this tab and go to the bot and run this out. Let's see if it works. Okay, so here I have executed the bot. Now I'm not doing anything with this bot. This bot is going to go to the browser, right? Open uh, maybe Chrome browser or something out there, and uh, you know, going to show that out. Okay, so let's see if we get that out here. So it says that cannot communicate with the browser, right? So it is having some issues with the browser. Let me check with that. What's the issue with the browser? Open browser, and which browser are we talking about it? Well, uh, so here we are talking about a particular browser here open browser HTTP this one and uh, 
it is not able to open browser Resolute Firefox it couldn't find Firefox. So I, I should have selected Chrome into this. Okay, so let me run the bot again uh, Let me check here. Is this email now has become read email or if it is still unread? Oh, it has become read. So the bot has read this email. So I have selected I had selected earlier there Firefox now I have selected Chrome into that so I'm gonna do that and again send an email to myself right with the name iPhone into it and click on send button So I have unread email with iPhone let me check it out and run this boat. So now it's it should open, uh, you know, it should open the uh, browser Chrome as I've selected Chrome into that option. Only it was Firefox. That was a challenge here. So it has opening Chrome and you can see that it is searching iPhone over here. And by searching iPhone, it should be able to collect, go to multiple pages. It is going to multiple pages. I'm not doing this, you see. It's going to multiple pages and uh, from all these pages, it should collect data. And it should create an CSV file out of this data and it should send that CSV file uh, as a reply to that email right so once it comes back we'll be able to see that have we received that data or not okay so the bot has done the screen you know uh, screening of data it has collected all the data let's wait, wait for it to be able to send an email So it has got error somewhere. Let me check where is that. Could not find a path. See user. Okay, it couldn't find that path where it could save that out. So I, I need to check with this again. So let's say what I can do is I'm gonna say this as uh, uh, you know uh, RPA demo dot CSV save and uh, I would say that well if it doesn't exist create it. Right, so well, that's the CSV file. It will create an extra data table. It will write into that and then it should work. I think yeah All right, so let's check it out. So here it is I need to again run this out so it couldn't find this file earlier now I think it should be able to find that out and uh, Then it should be able to write data to this I'll say rpa demo Dot CSV Okay, so let me run this again. Slight issues with this. Okay, and I'm gonna again write an email to myself and short India and iPhone. Okay, and here we go. Instead of iPhone, I could use anything else as well. As you can see, that every time the email is now being read by the boat. Right, so let me run this again. And uh, here, now the boat should open the Chrome browser as. Uh, you know, we should wait for that and it will do that job It'll open the Chrome browser and it will uh, Search iPhone into that as it was a part of subject. It will go to multiple pages All possible pages of iPhone collect data from all these pages and write try to write this data into a CSV file So it has collected all the data now it will try to write this data to a CSV file If it doesn't get the same error as previous as I heard on this boat, which I created couple of months back so it maybe the paths would have changed that was the reason earlier we got error at this point we should work it should work well let's check it out all right so let's wait for it it looks like it's gonna give error again well I got error again so it says that you couldn't find a path uh, you know uh, Okay, it couldn't find that path. So I need to uh, maybe write that again. So maybe I can say that uh, RPA demo. Okay, I'm trying to actually, uh, you know, here it was fine, but uh, here it was a challenge. So I need to save this attachment. So in the attachment, I have mentioned that, well, I want to attach a file, right? So I need to check that out. So this path was wrong. This path was wrong. So I need to maybe share the right path in this case copy as path so here it couldn't you know uh, attach that out this is this was wrong here now it is right okay so let me go back and this time it's gonna work out well 
let me close this out. So the issues with path I've mentioned. Let me again do this. Ensure India and this time I'm gonna again I want to have iPhone will change this out as well. Okay. And here we go and send it out. You can see that unread email. Let's run the boat. So we got we could catch the error where it was. It was actually moving, uh, you know, trying to attach a file which was wrong. So again, it's opening up Chrome uh, browser, Flipkart, traveling through multiple traversing through multiple pages, and collecting captioned data from that. And uh, you know, it should store out the data into CSV file and it should drop that as an email. So let's check out now. So it has sent the email. Let's go back and check our email. So if I go back and check the email here, you can see that I have received an email attachment of result. Please find the attachment. And if I see this attachment, I will find all the prices of, uh, you know, uh, if I open this with Google Sheets or something like that, I can easily see that. I can also download that attachment as well down offline and see that out. Let's wait. Oh, looks like it's not opening with Google files. Let me check here. Oh, it's, it was actually creating a wrong file. Maybe it was not able to find the path. So the idea is that, you know, uh, 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 it was not able to identify the object from it, but yeah, we'll develop this boat from scratch and there we'll be able to see that. So the idea is that, well, uh, robotics process automation is more about creating some boats, you know, some robots which can do a specific uh, specified task, right? Which could be, which could follow a set of sequences or a mundane job or a repetitive job. That job could be, let's say, uh, you know, filling data into CSV or maybe collecting data from a particular email, creating a report out of it and sending that back. So such jobs which are heavily, uh, you know, there into in the role of banking, finance, and uh, supply chain management could be automated easily using RPA, robotic social automation. So the idea of RPA is about creating similar ro software robots, not the hardware robots. So it's more relevant to computer science. Uh, come back to your question, Srihani. So yeah, it's, it's a lot relevant to computer science because it's more about creating software robots using such tools available. One of the tools that we have used is UiPath. So RP is more about automating such business process where uh, a lot of people, you know, spend a huge amount of time doing mundane jobs and uh, not do creative jobs, right? And such jobs could, is now being automated heavily with RPA. So the banks, uh, healthcare, travel organization, hospitality, accommodation organization have been heavily adapting RPA for such applications, right? The example that we have seen was very simple bot and uh, uh, you know, it has, it had a little bit of errors because it was very old bot that I was using and uh, the paths mentioned into that were not correct. Okay, so if you look at uh, one of the process, business process of account opening. So what happens when it comes to account opening that, uh, you know, the existing customer comes to LOC account opening part where a customer request application is going to be accepted that customer request application, right? I go to bank and I fill an application like that. That application will then go inside uh, the operational decision management application where BPM is going to analyze that application process that out. Then, uh, you know, it will go further to account, account opening task. So in that, what will happen is first it will go to operation management application. Then it will go to customer information master system where they will feed the customer data into the main system. Then it will go to tax valuation. Then it will go to LOC account system. So such, you know, at every computer, there are multiple humans who are doing the job of clerks and uh, let's say different other roles in the banks who are used in all this process of bank account opening. Then it is going to be validated by the IT cell and, uh, you know, the BPM management uh, tool. And then finally, uh, the customer call executive is going to reach out to the customer that well, your account is now opened. 
okay so this whole process you see this whole process very tedious process step by step process where uh, at every here there is a different software used here there is a different software used there is a different software used here there is a different software used here and there are a lot of around five to six human executives are involved in bank account opening process so such a way in every uh, big or small company the operation cost is huge right there is a if you could talk about insurance claim processing or bank account opening or maybe uh, you know vehicle claim processing healthcare account processing right or data processing in healthcare there are a lot of humans involved who do simply mundane jobs and let's say account and finance in colleges right they do repetitive jobs every day opening checks and then looking at the values and all right and such jobs could be so the idea of rpa is to build some robots which could be used to automate such jobs so you can say i can easily create a back office robot which can be used to create automate such uh, this segment of the whole uh, job and a robot can simply do this and i can have lesser humans who is doing these jobs right so that's the idea of rpa right so Sales account tend needs to open hundreds of account opening application every day, which are more of repetitive rule based workflow task. The use software like Windows, Java, Internet Explorer, CSV, Excel, PDF, SAP, or email. So we can make a bot interact with this software and do the job of human. Right. So it's more about rather than using human workforce to do this job, creating a software robot which can do this job of blank clerks, clerks and all. Right, so RPA can simply be used to, to create such boards which can mimic human actions. Right, so uh, RPA also uses artificial intelligence at some point to be able to be uh, as intelligent as humans in doing some tasks, maybe let's say reading uh, checks, identifying signature on checks, or maybe identifying handwriting, matching faces of uh, customers. In such situations, AI can help RPA to execute the task. So RP is more about a cultural change. A big change in industry is the way a lot of industries have been operating. Uh, the software industries have been uh, developing software. RP is more about updating that to a new level where we uh, built a conjunction between multiple tools and ERP solutions, uh, you know, uh, so as to reduce the human efforts, reduce the tedious lengthy series of operations as well. Okay. So yeah, this was more of idea of RPA and uh, so based on this discussion, if we talk about what exactly robotics process automation or RPA is about. So RPA is about mimicking human actions, creating some software boards which can do this job. And uh, uh, then you might have a question that well, how do you do this? So another benefit of RPA is that, you know, it doesn't work on the programming level. So it doesn't integrate with any software, whether it is email or it is, uh, <coughs> you know it is email or it is excel or it is pdf from the back end of it so it does not integrate with any such software from the back end rather it integrates with the software from the front end layer for example when i use microsoft excel i don't want i don't need to look at the code behind microsoft excel when i use email or google chrome i don't need to look at the code behind that i can simply interact with these tools from the presentation layer the same way software robots also interact with these tools or maybe these uh, interfaces from the presentation layer. Okay, so yeah, that's the idea. Uh, well, RPA is not similar to artificial assistant. Artificial assistant could be done with coding, but RPA we don't use coding, right? So. Uh, so the idea of RPA is that it more of it it interacts with the user interface, uh, but yeah you can say that one way Manish uh, RPA uses AI. So one of the application or a way that AI can be leveraged by industry could be RPA. Okay, so uh, with robotics process automation with RPA tool, you can easily integrate HTML, ERP, Windows applications, uh, the uh, data related applications. Email accounts, Citrix, mainframe, Java applications as well. RPA can be called as automation of automation or automation of softwares, right? Or bridging multiple automations, connecting a lot of automations as well together, you can say. So uh, in RPA, a robot which we create is popularly called as bot. So we refer a robot or a robot created 
using these tools as a bot. So we call our bot as a bot. There are two types of bots, unattended bots and attended bots. Unattended bots are the bots which do not require any human intervention. And attended bots are the one which require some kind of human intervention in the execution. So attended bots could be used more of at a front end office or a front end uh, uh, you know, uh, user interface where customers are going to interact or maybe uh, a bank executive or a, any any organization of executives going to interact with it. Unattended bots are the one which do not require any human execution and can be uh, you know run on the back end side of it. Right, so that's the idea about attended bots and unattended bots. Similarly, uh, we have intelligent bots from attended unattended when we attach AI to them, uh, you know, these could be thought of as a uh, this could be thought of as an intelligent bot. Right, so if you talk about human versus digital force, why should I prefer using a robot instead of humans in a particular task? Right, so humans are very good at creativity. Humans can do creative jobs. Humans are good at empathy. Humans are good at interpersonal communication skills. Humans are good at building relationships. And humans do not like boring jobs and mundane jobs. Contrary to that, the machines or software boards can do job at higher productivity, 24 into 7 into 365. They are pretty good at accuracy and efficiency, cost effective, easy to take over boring jobs and mundane jobs. And other than that, no excuses. So, uh, uh, so for such mundane and, and boring and repetitive rule based jobs, we can make software bots do that jobs. And that's where uh, RPA could be heavily used out. So RPA is used to create or build such software bots. How RPA actually works. So the way we humans interact with these software is by our eyes and hands and brain. The same way we can make a robot interact with this by the user interface using keyboard and mouse and uh, you know uh, some rule based systems which we call as brain. RPA boards can easily interact the UI element like buttons can easily identify text can easily identify image and can also identify object from the images as well. So RPA boards can interact with these all means with the uh, software boards. I mean with the softwares. What kind of process could be suitable for it? So you can say the process which are repetitive mundane which are very lengthy, you know, non-invasive structured data related process are very much suitable for RPA. So RPA more of integration centric. It's more about collecting or connecting multiple softwares and tools. More of human centric. So you can do people intensive document intensive or design intensive process with it. Typical applications, where do we use RPA? That could include finance and accounting. We use it for sales order processing, invoicing, invoice processing, right account receivables ledgering ledger accounting expense management in procurement we use rpa for supply data management record to report order to cash procure to pay bfsi anti money laundering activity management account servicing reconciliation performance monitoring loan origination security insurance finance and accounting like that so these are multiple applications where RPA is now heavily being used as RPA is uh, you know reducing a lot of human efforts. It is one of the very highly paid job in today's market and uh, you know uh, one of the most demanding skill as well in the IT professional. There's a couple of benefits of RPA boards as we discussed earlier as well. If you talk about advantage and disadvantage of RPA RPA boards are you know they can improve efficiency and provide great productivity at doing tasks. Uh, you can have increased compliance and rule based systems to stuff. Uh, non invasive cost reduction, you know, better management uh, capabilities it can have and you can provide better customer experience. Disadvantage could include employee resistance. Employees do not easily want in board to do their job. Uh, it may possible that we may uh, or an RPA board may automate a wrong process or we may end up creating a board for wrong process. Uh, sometimes people put unrealistic expectations with RPA board that should not be there. Lack of technical abilities with RPA boards. Boards or robots do not have common sense, right? So that's also uh, you know one of the disadvantages of it. So this question: Can we use RPA board for teaching or to teach coding? So you see, it can simply teach it, but it can't answer the questions. 
right so it only follows rule based systems that's where it has limited applications so uh, the uses where you have mundane jobs you know let's say that uh, check processing so every day in bank somebody is doing check processing so it's a very rule based stuff no need to, for any you know uh, use to take a very heavy decision into that just verify signature if signature is matching process it allow it not matching not allow it rule based systems wherever there are such rule based systems we can develop boards to do that Myths are that RBA will replace humans. RPA will not always replace humans, only it will replace humans in some cases where they are mundane and repetitive jobs. RPA is about cost reduction. Well, yes, it is about RPA uh, marks the end of BPO. So RPA helps to reduce the BPO, but it cannot end BPOs. Boats are accurate 100%, not always. You know, it, it may, in some cases, it may not have common sense. Yeah, Shubham, that could be there. AI could be used to do that. RPA is not expensive. There are a lot of free tools as well. I mean, uh, it's not as expensive as you, you know, they're licensed tools, but uh, uh, it's not uh, the cost of implementation will be always lower than the, the uh, you know, losses that you're making without RPA. All office work cannot be automated. Only some part of office work could be automated. And uh, yeah, it could be applicable for all sectors. So yeah, that's the idea. So. Uh, after applying RP, many of the businesses and organizations have been able to, uh, you know, uh, identify situations wherein they can make humans do a better set of tasks, right? So let's say if the boats are asked to do uh, mundane jobs or repetitive jobs, humans can be used to do high level jobs and maybe the jobs at which humans are good at doing creativity, innovation and building new products thinking about something rather than just filling CSV files and Excel sheets and dropping that as an email, reading emails and doing repetitive jobs. So RPA boards are used to, to automate such tasks. Okay, it also, uh, you know, uh, threats to a lot of BPO industries. So a lot of BPO industries where there has been already always rule-based system. If this is the question, this is the answer. This is the question, this is the answer. Such rule-based tasks could be automated with RPA. Okay, and uh, yeah, that's one idea. Uh, so in, in recent years, if you talk about in investments into RPA, so in 2018, this has been investment into RPA, uh, where you can say that uh, investment into RPA versus investment in outsourcing so rp investment has increased a lot in telecom insurance and there's a huge uh, peak or difference in insurance and banking finance sector and that energy travel manufacturing utilities healthcare has seen a huge impact of rp and the set of investment that has been increasing in rpa compared to the previous year is is pretty huge uh, in all these industries and uh, also if you compare that to the amount of investment done in outsourcing a particular project Uh, what are the RPA products? So well, there are a lot of first thing RPA doesn't require you to do coding So RPA is a programming free platform So you don't need to learn programming to implement or build RPA boards. There are a lot of good tools available to do so RPA only interacts with the tools on the front end part. So you don't have to interact with coding at all Okay, so well then the question could be how do we build such robots or how can I create uh, software robots? So what are these popular tools or the platforms? which are widely used or which can be used, you know, to, to build uh, such boats. So the answer to previous couple of questions. So an RP industry, uh, you know, an RPA complete industry consists of multiple players. So there are some product developing companies, the companies which provide platform to develop boats. Then there are some consulting companies. Consulting companies help enterprises to identify where can I use RPA implementation companies where they build the board solution for the client and training companies which write training solutions okay so you can say that uh, uh, technology providers are the popular technology providers include automation anywhere blue prism ui path open span and work fusion these are a couple of very popular softwares or platforms which can be used to create boards 
uh, consulting companies like Ernst & Young, Deloitte, KPMG and PwC, these companies identify the situation where an organization can use the RPA board. And the service provider like Accenture, Capgemini, Cognizant, Genpack, Dell, Hewlett, Packard, Infosys, Wipro, Tech Mahindra, these organizations use the, you know, the software, the software to create boards for non-IT clients. Right, so what are the software? The popular software include Automation Anywhere, On the Top Notch, Blue Prisma, UiPath, OpenSpan, WorkFusion, NICE, Thoronomy, and then there are many more, Edgeverb, Crayon Leo, Coffee's Kapow, uh, Redwood Software, Soft Automotive, Contextor, uh, APNs, Jacada, Winst, and uh, uh, Conduent, Celatin, IPsoft, Automation Edge, OpenConnect, Antworks, Teramatics, there are multiple tools available. The top-notch tool is Automation Anywhere. Automation Anywhere has the biggest market present and breadth of use cases widely used in different industries. Second on the top notch is Blue Prisma. Board governance and one of the very earliest and oldest platform, if you say in RPA, is Blue Prisma. And third, the popular one, which the example of which I was showing out is UiPath. And that's from UK. And uh, uh, that's one of the uh, youngest tool, but uh, one of the very powerful tool available in the market. OpenSpan is another BPM leader and WorkFusion is Java based tool. If you talk about leaders, so Automation Anywhere, UiPath, and Blue Prisma. These are three. You don't need to learn all of these, only one of these, right? So uh, these three are leaders in the market and are one of the top most tools uh, which are used by industries across the world to develop RPA boards. The second performance may include uh, NICE, which is NICE, WorkFusion, EdgeWorb, Crayon, Pega Systems, and Redwood. And uh, the contenders in the market are Contexto, Coffex Kapow, and Softmotive. These are very popular tools which are widely used for developing such boards. Any of these tools do not require you to interact with programming or coding. These all tools are front-end tools and are more of drag and drop based tools and do not need as, as a user, I, as a developer, I don't need to learn coding for these using these tools. Automation Anywhere is one of the biggest market present uh, uh, you know, organization and 950 plus enterprise customers supports front office robot and back office robot. The products of Automation Anywhere includes IQ bot, bot insight, bot farming, bot store like that. The client who use Automation Anywhere are Google, Tesco, Cisco, Siemens, VW, Mastercard, Dell, Comcast, General Motors, a Australian New Zealand Bank, AT&T, Whirlpool, LinkedIn, ING, Santander, and Mask. Group is another biggest player in the market, second biggest player, a very popular product, very strong board development methodology and very strong security interface they have. They don't support front office robot. That means attended boards cannot be developed using Group Prism. Only unattended boards can be developed using this. One of the very oldest one found in 2001. And uh, the customers include BMI Mellon, Coca-Cola, Walgreens, Fannie Mae, National Grid, NP, NPower, Pfizer, Prudential, Snyder, Direct, NHS, and Wells Fargo, UBS, USG, and EXL. UiPath, the third most popular one, and the one that we're gonna see a demo on a very detailed use of UiPath tomorrow. So that's an RPA product and uh, has a good market impact, user-friendly, and uh, supports FOR and BOR both, front office bot and back office robot as well. Products include UiPath Studio, UiPath Robot, UiPath Orchestration, there's a free community version of UiPath for personal users. And uh, the companies include GE and HP, SAP, AXA, JP Morgan, BBC, Jewish, Vodafone, Volvo, Lufthansa, Telenor, McDonald's, Equifax, and Densto. WorkFusion, organizations like Access Bank, Citibank, Citigroup, Amazon, IQ, PC, BNP, Paribas, LNT, Bank of America, Bristol, and uh, Shub and Vichara Technologies, Mysore Script, many of these use it. Built on the top of Java, AI-driven development, 401, and there are a couple of hundreds of customers for WorkFusion. OpenSpan, built in 2004, but though it is very old tool, couldn't gain as much of popularity as other tools. And uh, United Healthcare, Radial, Entertainment, Optima, a couple of pop clients of it. 
so uh, you know these are all popular tools available they could you could have question that well if i have to pick one tool how will i do that so ea path is a software which could be used to uh, you know uh, develop such boards okay so you may have question that well if i have to pick one of such board you know which would be uh, you know one of such platform to build a robot which platform it would be so you can say that well uh, the choice will depend on four factors development operations vendor and pricing in development we'll look at the features and the functionalities available with the software and operations you can check out what is the runtime performance of this software or the board built on the top of this software vendor you can look at the product company how good they are and will they be able to develop a lot in future will they be able to develop uh, you know are they investing good on ai or maybe other uh, promising technologies so that tomorrow they'll have good platform more functionalities and pricing which includes tco total cost of ownership so let's look at an example maybe you can have uh, uh, you know uh, on which factors you may want to select a particular tool so in development maybe you can look at uh, the features and functionalities of the boat you can look at the development delivery speed accuracy of the tool reusability of tool extensibility learning curve and how does it fits your purpose in operations runtime accuracy control and governance security troubleshooting resilience scalability fitment of purpose vendor what's the vision of vendor who are the partners who is using that what is the support provider training provided industry validation references future proof and the board store pricing that is where you can use uh, you know the pricing exactly the total cost of ownership and the value versus price okay so that's that's one idea of how do we you know select an rpa product what is the project life cycle how do we start with an rpa project so the project uh, mainly focuses on the business should own the drive project and should be able to drive the project it should be help them out to build and support so in rpa project there are three participants or you can say there are three, are three teams of a particular company who uh, take part into that which includes business it and hr so let's say if you talk about a business case here let's talk about the next slide here uh, yeah not this one i'm sorry looks like uh, let me come back yeah yeah this one so if you talk about the business case how do we start with that and uh, you know how do we kind of pick up a particular tool for developing uh, an rpa project right so or the idea is that what should be the phases of project in general okay so if you look back at that so first thing that we can start with opportunity identify the opportunity is there a possibility to apply rpa or not that's where you might look at, want to look at uh, you know the whole business process understand that and that job in a company will be done by a guy called business analyst so a guy called business analyst is going to analyze the business process look at the overall idea how the business works where they make losses where they make profit where they give uh, what what causes delay analyze these all situations and based on that identify situations wherein it is possible to implement rpa once the ba guy is implementing or is it's able to implement or uh, identify the situation where rpa board could be deployed and can be used then the business analyst will do the second step which includes the uh, process architecting that means how the steps are involved after what what happens and how the step by step execution should happen in general with the board right so that's where uh, process architect is going to happen that's where specifications definition and uh, analyzing maybe a step by step approach as well could be uh, there third would be solution where the technical architecture will be built that means uh, a particular technical architect will build the technical implementation how technically it will be developed in step by step approach and then rpa developers will come into picture well they will develop the complete workflow and the product once rpa developers have developed the complete workflow and the product the product will go into testing where acceptance testing 
uh, UAT testing, manager testing, developer testing, all of the testing will be done. And then it is ready for use and it will go live in the production. So now it is in operations and it is in use. So these are the steps involved, which includes the life cycle of an RPA project. Right. So these are the steps involved. Uh, this is which includes the life cycle of an RPA project. Uh, this is not OPS concept. OPS is a programming concept and this is the project management uh, uh, planning of an RPA project. And OPS comes in programming has no relation with this. Okay, the project life cycle if you define it much uh, by the way so you can see that you we discover the opportunity where we can implement RPA where we uh, you know uh, we de develop the business requirement document BRD the business analyst is going to do that then it's going to business analyst is going to develop PDD the process uh, document and uh, SDD the technical architect is going to develop SDD right if you talk about the full forms of it so it, here it goes so BRD stands for business requirement document where the BA or the business analyst is going to analyze the business process identify the opportunity and pin down that in the BRD. Then the pro, uh, business architect is going to do the process of the job of process architecture. So that's where first they're going to develop the project management plan. So how the project will be developed and what is the management plan. Secondly, they're going to develop the software requirement document SRD, where they will mention all the specification, uh, cost of the software, implementation cost, and everything. Then once it is decided from the business architect, then they will they develop PDD process definition document. They'll define each and every step that well, this is the process which needs to be automated. This process A, process B, process C needs to be automated step by step. Once that is done, then uh, the job of business analyst here finishes out and the job of technical architect starts. A technical architect will develop solution design document. Well, they will develop the complete idea of how should be the software design document, the complete architectural step by step approach. And implementation, technical design document, operational op impact document, uh, the process designing, object designing, instru instruction. Once technical architect has developed this whole end-to-end -end, uh, application and end-to-end -end solution, then the job of uh, RPA developer will come into picture. So RPA developer here will use now any of the tool could be UiPath or Business uh, uh, Blue Prism or automation anywhere as decided in the previous steps for implementation part. Once it is implementation, it will go to UAT testing where user acceptance will be checked out. First, it will go to developer testing, then manager testing, UAT testing, and then finally it will come to deployment phase where it will be deployed in production. And then now it is in U operations use. So this is life cycle of an RPA project in general, you know how it goes in step-by-step -step execution. Okay, I hope you're good so far with this. All right, so that's the idea so far. All right, let me know if you have any question. Well, so today we have seen the idea of what is RPA. So RPA is more about robotics process automation, a process of creating software robots, which could be used to do some mundane or repetitive rule-based jobs. And robot is more about uh, an agent which can do a software task or a execute a process. Automation is about connecting two processes via a particular rule, right? And RP is about building such software which could connect and you know execute a specific process. RP is more about reduce, uh, letting humans do better, better and creative jobs by uh, you know letting the uh, mundane and repetitive jobs being done by robots, software robots. The popular tools include Automation Anywhere, UiPath and Blue Prism. There are two types of bots, back office robot and so front office robot. Back office robot can also be called as unattended bots. Front office robots can also be called as attended bots. Unattended bots or the back office robots are the one which does not require any human intervention. Front office robot or attended bots are the one which require some kind of human intervention. The popular tools for developing such bots include automation anywhere, or Blue Prism or UiPath. These are the three top-notch tools. Other includes Pega Systems, WorkFusion, OpenSpan, NICE, 
thoronomy observe coefix kapow like that we also discussed about the rpa project life cycle so this was more of introduction to rpa today in tomorrow's session we'll extensively look at how to use a tool called ui path and it will be completely hands-on session where you will learn to use the tool and build such robots as well in practice right so that's the idea of robotics versus automation okay so let me know now if you have any questions so far Uh, here you are using oops concept. No, it's not oops concept. You know oops is a programming related term and this is project management Okay, so I hope we are good so far. So this part today will end up here tomorrow We'll extensively look at a lot of uh, implementation of uh, RPA boards with UiPath. Thank you all for joining session today. See you all in tomorrow's session